If you have a 3D printer, you may run into the same problems I do. Some cardboard spools are too weak and can cause filament feeding issues. Some filaments come with non-standard spools that are hard to fit into the AMS system. Leftover filaments pile up in a corner and it goes day by day. So I really need to build a machine to solve all these problems. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you my new design, filament rewinder. Here is the final product I designed and built over two weeks, a super flexible 3D printed filament rewinder. It's made up of the main body, matching gears, a spool, and a spool adapter. You might be wondering why do I even need a spool adapter if the spool is already part of the design. Well, that's because they're designed for different systems. Some 3D printers don't use standard size spools, and some people like adding custom decorative patterns to their spools. So I built options for these cases into the design. The DIY spool has built-in threads, making it easy to mount on the filament winder and just as easy to remove. And the best part? The entire spool is fully 3D printed, so if it ever gets damaged, you can just print the new one quick and easy. Compared with many cardboard spool, this one is far more reliable. The filament adapter is mainly designed for Bamboo Labs reusable spools. Its dimensions are identical to the ones you get when purchasing filament refills directly from Bamboo's official store. In other words, I can wind leftover filament onto this adapter, seal it in a moisture-proof bag, and store it neatly alongside new bamboo filaments. Since they are the same size, everything looks tidy and well-organized, visually clean and space-efficient. The machine consists of five main parts, the control module, the stepper motor with drive gears, the support frame, the main gear also called the driven gear, and the filament guide module. The control module includes a control panel with a power switch, a buzzer, and a rotary encoder. The stepper motor is mounted above the control module on a support bracket. There are two interchangeable main gear systems, one for a custom spool and another for a filament adapter. You can switch between the two as needed. At the rear, the filament guide is driven by a servo. In the program, I calculate the servo's rotation angle based on filament width. So for every full revolution of the main gear, the servo moves precisely to achieve accurate winding. A sensor above the filament guide detects filament presence. If no filament is detected, the machine stops automatically. The machine has three modes. After powering on, the default mode is spool adjustment mode where turning the rotary encoder drives the large gear clockwise or counterclockwise to position and secure the filament end on the adapter. Pressing the encoder knob switches to mode 2, which adjusts the position of the filament guide to set the starting point. Mode 3 is the operating mode, in which the encoder is used to control the winding speed. Now let's take the machine apart and look inside. First, remove the four screw holding the side cover, then take off the side panel. You'll see a 5200 mAh lithium battery. I like battery powered devices because they're easier to keep tidy and you don't have to deal with messy cables. But if you prefer an external power supply, we can use this space to add a transformer that converts mains AC to 12 volts DC. Remove the driven gear and you'll see two LM29749 bearings with matching LM29710 metal ring. I previously tried fully 3D printed bearings, but the results weren't good. They had high friction and noticeable vibration, so I don't recommend them. Next, take out the screws that secure the battery module and the connecting sections, and the machine will split into four parts. The filament sensor above the filament guide module is secured with two M3 screws. I installed two M3 heatset inserts in the 3D printed part to hold the screws firmly. The main mechanism uses an MG996R servo connected to a half-round gear. This half-round gear runs along a straight gear rack to move the filament guide module in a straight line. Remove the screws skewering the driven gear bracket, then take the bracket off. Because of printer size limits, I split the main body into two parts for printing. The drive gear on the stepper motor is mounted to the drive shaft with a 5mm inside diameter flange. The gear has a notch that lets you tighten the flange's set screw. Installation order is, first place the gear between the flange and the motor, and then tighten the flange's set screw through the notch. 
then fasten the gear to the flange with four screws. This design improves concentricity between the gear and motor shaft, which reduces gear to gear friction, lowers the load on the stepper, and cuts vibration and noise. The stepper motor's metal bracket is fastened with 4 M4 screws. I install 4 M4 heatset inserts in the 3D printer mounting plate to secure these screws. This build uses a NEMA 17 with a 42mm body, but you can choose other sizes of NEMA 17 based on the torque you need. Remove the screws on the control box lid and open it. You'll see a 12 volt 40 by 40 mm cooling fan. It cools the boost converter for the stepper motor. This converter raises the 7.4 volts from the lithium battery to 24 volts, so the stepper can deliver enough torque at its rated current. For the stepper driver, I prefer the TMC2208 over the A4988. It runs quieter and has better cooling. Paired with the stepper motor driver expansion board, it's also easier to install. I tried running the stepper directly at 12 volts, but it overheated, and several parts were at risk of damage from excessive current. The main controller is an Arduino Nano. The other side of the box connects to the control panel, which has a power switch, a buzzer, and a rotary encoder. Because the machine's functions are simple, I didn't add a display. For a future, more capable version, I'll add a display for easier navigation and control. The machine is very easy to use. These are all the tools you need for rewinding filament. Before you start, I recommend heating the filament in a dryer for one hour, then feed one end through the filament sensor and attach it to the filament adapter or new spool. While rewinding, you can use this machine to fuse pieces of the same material together, combining several small leftovers into one fresh spool, then label the new spool. This saves a lot of space. Here's how it looked before organizing the filament, and here's how it looks after rewinding. I'll share the 3D printing files for this machine, along with the control code. If you like my design, please give me thumb up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and see you next time.